And we're back here with Northern Michigan head football coach Kyle Nystrom. Coach, thank you for stopping by here with your players. I'll let you guys introduce your players this time. Who, Great. who we have you. here with us thank today? Thank you. Yeah, these, these two mean a lot to me. They're both coming back for their sixth year at Northern. And so they were both uh, in my first year of recruiting. Um, I have DeAndre Codwell here and, and, and John McMullen. They're both from Kankakee High School. And uh, uh, last year, the first game at McKendree, uh, DeAndre was four rushes for 103 yards, and then he had an injury that knocked him out for the season. So we're getting him back for his sixth year, and uh, love having him back. Uh, and John is one of our most dynamic defensive linemen. they got great core strength, and they're both just wonderful kids and good football players. And uh, the best part about the job is me getting to hang out with them. That's what I, I love coming to the media stuff because I get to spend time. They got to ride in the car with me all day. They can't get away. <laughs> But they're wonderful people. Uh, they, they're looking shy, but I know these, these guys are probably chatterboxes on the road and oh, yeah. trying to take yeah. control of the, you know, the, the radio and everything like that. Um, you closed out last year with the win versus Northwood. You know, I've been reading the tea leaves. You guys kicked them out of the league with that win. Um, but all jokes aside, how does a win closing out a season carry itself over into the spring and into the fall? Uh, how big is, is closing out on a winning note? Oh, it's, it meant everything to us. It gave us momentum going into the off season for training and just your mental psyche of what you're going to do uh, during the winter for training and what you're going to do in spring ball. You just feel a lot better about what you're doing and where you're at and, and, you, and the things you have to build off of. Now, you know, just like the rest of the coaches have said when they've been up here, that's all behind us now. And uh, our number one game is McKendry. And so uh, I don't look past that. And I don't think the players do it all either. And we've had a great summer. Our program has, has, has evolved, and we're starting to look like a really good fo college football team physically. Uh, our coach, Branch, our strength coach, who played wide out at Northern, uh, works our guys out and takes care of them. And, and uh, they put the time in, so I like the way we look now. But, um, you know, when you can win that last game and get some motivation and do things like that, we're, we're a different program right now than we've been in the past. I know close only counts in horseshoes and grenades, right? But the fact that you guys won a lot of, or were in a lot of close games, how do you take the close losses in 2021? How do you coach through that portion of it and those, turn those into close wins or big wins this season? Because that's a, when you watch you guys play, like, man, they were right there, you know? And then now let's hope they win these close games. How do you coach through that? Well, you, you use that dynamic when we get into camp here in another couple of weeks and that um, when we go into practice uh, and set up drills and things like that, what kind of things we're, elements we're going to work at at practice, we'll bring those things back up. We'll put ourselves in those situations. And be honest with you, you put them in the position that they have. Uh, they've been there before, so when you play, you can get it done the way you want to. But all that aside, it's about having – uh, more mature, better football players that have been with us for a long time. And so if, if you look at just our running back segment, um, there's four starters coming back. And you got DeAndre, you got Tyshawn back, and we got Taekwon Cox, and we'll get Kobe Manzo back too. So um, on offense, the only thing, we got to replace two offensive linemen. The rest of them are back. Um, and on defense, we've got, we've got some people coming back off an of injury that, that happened in camp last year to help John at the D-line. And that's going to be critical for us. We're, we're going to, you know, we're going to attack camp and do the things like everybody else does, but I want to get through that thing healthy as possible and so that we can get to Saturdays and have, have all the bullets in our guns and get ready to play. John, listen, one of my favorite sayings is size is not a skill. And watching you along the defensive line, you remind me a lot of a guy that played at Virginia Tech, uh, Corey Moore. It was about your size, was a terror in the backfield. How have you been able to consistently win at your size despite going against guys that average 6'3", 300 plus pounds? You're out there killing them every, each and every week, double digit sacks twice in, in your career. How have you been able to, to manage that? Um, I probably, I think some people look at being undersized as a disadvantage. But me personally, I take it as the advantage. Mainly because I feel like at the beginning of the game, the, w the way that they might look at you is like, you're an underdog. And then after you start to dominate, you start to get in the head a little bit. And that's the best thing about playing on the D-line. I think defense is the best side of the ball to be on. Just because it's a, a more intense side of the game. But uh, overall, though, I think it's all about just like the start to the finish. And my 
D-line coach, he preached on that a lot. Just start the game the same way that you're going to finish it. You know, I know it's not a one-to-one, -one, but do you find that because of your size, your endurance for four quarters tend to be a little bit better than someone that's 300-plus pounds having to go off the ball each and every snap? So by the time they get to the fourth quarter, play 60, you're at play 20 in your, in your mind. They're at play 80. You know, even though it's the 60th play. I actually used to play offensive line in high school, so I kind of get a feel for that. But I think that helps me a little bit more on the defensive side. Just being able to, like, know exactly what the offensive lineman is thinking and use that to for uh, advantage on my end. DeAndre, um, you know, the, the most important position on the football field, obviously, um, is, is the ball carry, you know. And it's philosophically, it's because it's the only position where you know you're getting the ball. Like receivers got to go do cardio and they hope the quarterback finds them and they get the football, right? You know you're getting the football. So philosophically, what is that feeling like to kind of, you know, get in the right mindset to, to really go out there and execute knowing that it's about to be 11 on one? Well, um, you know, you're a running back. So, you know, when that play gets called, you know, whatever they call it, 12, right? You know, they got the names for it. When that play gets called, you know, in your mind, that switch hits, and you're like, yeah, it's, it's go time, you know. I got to get ready for it. But for me personally, the uh, thing that changed for me is that that switch goes off before the game, whether I'm running the ball on special teams or whatever, because I used to look at special teams. I'm getting uh, sidetracked, but I used to look at special teams as, you know, not, not as important, but, you know, as, time, as your time runs out and everything, wherever you play is important. And I treat those the same, special teams, running back, whatever I play. So that switch hits, you know, I get caught out on the field. I'm ready no matter what, getting the ball or not. Coach just sent me a text. He said, ask him about pass pro. So I, I have to ask you, you know, we know that part of the, the game plan has to be in, intact. Uh, how is your pass pro? How have you gotten better? And, and how important is that to actually being on the field as a back? Well, for me, I like pass pro a lot because I like to hit and, um, a lot of people like cutting. I never really got into cutting because, I don't know, it's not that fun to me. I like, you know, pass pro is important, but just if you want to get the ball down the field and the way uh, pass rushes have evolved nowadays, you know, you got people like John coming off the edge real fast, four fives, four sixes, or whatever, and it's a big help to the quarterback in the pass game. And I look at it as, as if my uh, quarterback and receivers can eat, you know, it's a win right there. So I also enjoy hitting, you know, D linemen, you know, where they tangled up with the tackles or whatever, get a little cheap shot in or whatever. That, that's my – cutting was my thing until the first guy jumps over you and now you're like, oh, man, I, I, I can't cut anymore. Now I got to actually go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Those are the worst. Uh, we have any questions out here in the, with the media? You turn your mic on. I, I don't – okay. I got to follow up. Coach, when you look at Northern Michigan and the, the process of developing, and it, it, it has to be exciting, even though every year is a new year, uh, where you are in your process and, and how excited are you to continue to build uh, something special out there on the field? Yeah, we're having – it's – I'm looking really forward to it because I feel like, you know, for the first time in six years, we've got players that I feel really good about. Um, I've always liked our players, but there's always just been seasons that I was heck concerned about how we're going to hold up over here or over there, you know, just being honest with you. Mm -hmm. And this year, there's always some of that, but this year I really like what we have coming back. All the quarterbacks are back. All the running backs are back. Two linemen got to come back, uh, replace. Uh, we got all our wideouts back, a uh, couple defensive linemen. I got a uh, freshman linebacker that was is a real good player coming back, and all our corners are back. I'm going to replace one safety. And so the kickers and the snappers are back. And it's the first time in six years that I can say, you know what, we're more of a veteran team. And so, and we're making progress. Uh, we've got a, a couple new staff members. Uh, I hired a new offense coordinator, Dylan Shamura, um, and hired a new quarterback coach. And so uh, we're changing there for the better also. Well, Coach, listen, uh, always a pleasure talking shop. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you guys, too. Continue to go out there and dominate, and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. Thank you, sir. Thanks to everybody that's here. Appreciate it.